After the revelation of Ornias the demon, Solomon one day received a letter from the king of the Arabians, which read as follows, to King Solomon, all hail. Lo, we have heard about the wisdom bestowed upon you by the Lord, and that you are a merciful man. We know you have been granted understanding over all the spirits of the air, and on earth, and under the earth. Right now, in the land of Arabia, there is a spirit of the following kind. At early dawn, caused by this spirit, there begins to blow a certain wind, until the third hour. Its blast is so harsh and terrible, that it slays both man, and beast, and no spirit can live upon earth, against this demon. I pray you then, for as much as the spirit is a wind, come up with a solution, according to the wisdom given to you by the Lord your God, and accept to send a man able to capture it. If you would do this, King Solomon, I and my people, and all my land, will serve you till death, and all of Arabia shall be at peace with you, if you will perform this act of righteousness for us. We pray you, despise not our humble prayer, and suffer not to bring to nothing the province under your authority, because we are supplicants, both I and my people, and all my land. Farewell to my Lord, all health. But because he had a pressing matter to attend to, Solomon gave the letter to his servant, telling him to remind him of it after seven days. And what was this matter? Even though the temple of the Lord had been built, it was not yet finished, for there was a great stone, lying there, in front of the temple. The cornerstone, which Solomon desired to lay in the head of the corner, for the completion of the temple. But try all they might, none of his workmen could lift that stone, not even when combined, and neither could any of their equipments. For days, Solomon wondered what this could be. Surely, he knew this was no ordinary stone, for it was the same stone the Crest of Dragons spoke of, some time back. The stone which had been brought up from the Red Sea, by Epipas, the wind spirit of Arabia. And perhaps, only he could lift it, and place it at the exact spot desired by the king. After seven days, being reminded of the letter, from the king of Arabia, Solomon called his servant, and said to him, Prepare your camel, and get yourself a leather flask, and take also, this seal. Go into the land of Arabia, to the place in which the wind spirit blows, and there, untie the flask, and place the ring in the mouth of the flask, then hold them towards the blast of the spirit. When the flask is swollen, and blown out, you will know, that the demon has been trapped into it. Then hastily tie up the mouth of the flask, and seal it securely, with the ring. Lay it carefully upon the camel, and bring it to me quickly. If on the way, the spirit offers you gold, or silver, or treasure, in return for letting it go, see that you are not persuaded, but listen to it, without swearing an oath to release it. And then, if it points out to the places where there are gold or silver, mark the places, and seal them with the ring, and proceed to bring the demon to me. Go now, and fare thee well. The youth did as he had been bidden, and entered the land of the Arabians. And when the people of that region saw him, they could not believe that he would be able to catch the spirit. But when dawn came, and the blast began, the youth stood up, and laid the flask, with the ring in its mouth, on the ground, before the spirit's blast. And as the spirit blew, it was sucked right into the flask, by the ring. Seeing the flask had blown out, and knowing the spirit was inside, he promptly tightened its mouth, and sealed it in the name of the Lord God of Sabaoth, and the demon remained within the flask. He stayed in that land for three days, to make sure this spirit had been conquered. 
And indeed, the spirit no longer blew against that city, and all the Arabians knew that he had safely captured the spirit. As the youth made his way back to Jerusalem, the Arabians sent him forth, with much honor and precious gifts, praising the God of Israel. When he arrived, he at once laid the leather flask in the middle of the temple, for the king to see. And when Solomon went into the temple, still distressed about the cornerstone which could not be lifted, the flask stood up, and walked seven steps towards him, and then fell on its mouth, and bowed to him. Solomon marveled, that even while shut inside the bottle, the demon still had power, and could walk about. And so he bade it to stand up, and the flask stood up on its feet, all blown out. Solomon questioned the spirit, saying, Tell me, who are you? And from within, the spirit answered, I am the jinn, called Ephippas, that is in Arabia. And Solomon said to him, Is that your true name? And he answered, It is. And wheresoever I wish, I alight, and set fire, and blow the winds, and do as I please. Solomon said to him, By what angel are you frustrated? And he answered, By the only Lord, that has authority over me. It is he, who is to be born of a virgin, and crucified by the Jews, on a cross. He, whom the angels and archangels worship. He does frustrate me, and enfeeble me of my great strength, which has been given to me by my father the devil. And Solomon said to him, What can you do? And the spirit answered, I am able to move mountains, and to overthrow the oaths of kings. I can wither beautiful trees, and make their leaves to fall off. And Solomon said to him, Can you raise this great stone that lies at the corner of the temple? And the spirit answered, Not only can I raise this stone, O king, but also, with the help of the demon who presides over the Red Sea, I will bring up the pillar of air, and will stand it where you wish, in Jerusalem. So Solomon released him from the flask, and at once, the spirit girded himself up, and lifted the stone, effortlessly, and went up the stairs, with the flask tailing behind him, and laid it down, at the end of the entrance of the temple, just where it was meant to be. And Solomon, beholding the stone, raised aloft, and placed on a foundation, said, Truly, the scripture has been fulfilled. The stone which the builders rejected, has become the chief cornerstone. For it is not by my doing, but by God, that the demon should be strong enough to lift up a stone so great, and deposit it in the place I wished.